before we begin, I'd just like to say that this video is totally not a parody of Slip Phantom's Unicom Guides for World of Tanks, and that they totally did not inspire me to do this video. You also should totally not check out his channel, because he makes totally awful videos. Let's begin. The 1994 Mazda Miata MX-5 is a rear-wheel drive roadster usually driven by JDM fanboys who just got their license, in addition to having bought the car for an extremely cheap price, and are on their way to turning it into their own personal track day car, because track car bro. That is, of course, assuming it doesn't get totaled the moment they try to drift it. By the way, if you're one of those people that drifts in online adventures then please get out of my races, I do not want you there. All of the Miatas in this game behave very similarly, so you can probably apply all of the info in this guide to any of them if you really want to. I just picked the NA, because it has pop-up headlights, which according to many people immediately makes it the best Miata, regardless of performance. In a way, it behaves exactly how you'd expect a small modest rear-wheel drive roadster to behave like. It feels light, and it's very nimble through the corners. It has a decent four-cylinder engine that, although it isn't the quickest, has enough power to win races, and even slide its wheels if you push it too hard, like any rear-wheel drive car, and in this video, I will show you how to make the most of this cute little Japanese car without needing to all-wheel drive and engine swap it like virtually 90% of the players do, just because it can get a 4 rotor rotary. To teach you how to do this, we have brought here our studio's professional racing driver. Some say, if he headbangs too hard, his head shoots off like a rocket. All we know, is he is, sans from Undertale. Let's watch. You can't expect much from the MX-5, it's a Miata after all, but just because it's not the absolute best A-class car, that overtakes everything in the straights, it doesn't mean it's not a great car in the more technical sections of the track, so get those overtakes on the corners. As you're approaching a corner, brake. Because you're so light, you can outbreak a lot of cars, so take advantage of that. Immediately start downshifting after braking. You have to make sure you always stay at high RPMs with this car, because that's where your power is, and you don't have much of it. Turn your car towards the apex, and keep it partial throttle if you need to. This car is extremely grippy on turning. Once you're past the apex, gradually step on the throttle. Because you're so grippy, you can actually afford to be a bit more aggressive with the car, as it's unlikely to spin out or oversteer, so keep that in mind. Your biggest weakness is your overall speed. You're not a big quick sports car with a huge engine making 300 plus horsepower, you're just a light, modest roadster, and although your acceleration is quite mediocre and your top speed isn't the greatest, it's still good enough, and because your car is so grippy and light, you can manage to keep much of your speed throughout the corners, if you push the car hard. I genuinely believe the Miata is one of the most well balanced cars in A-Class. Now that you've mastered all of this, it's time to move on to the car itself. Thank you for showing us how to drive, Sans from Undertale. We'll be building the MX-5 for A-Class road racing, but because it starts all the way down in D-Class, don't let that stop you from trying to build it for any other class or type of racing, it's a Miata after all. But because we are building it for A-Class, start by getting race tires, and making them as thick as you can on the back. Look at those thick tires, that's a lot of grip. Get track widths in both the rear and the front, as you should every time you can. For drivetrain, get a race clutch, transmission, and differential. We'll come back for the drive line later, if we can. Get race brakes, suspension, and anti-roll bars. Roll cage is not necessary, as this car's handling is already superb. Get race weight reduction, because track car bro. For the engine. Start by getting the three most important parts, camshafts, exhaust, and intake manifold. From there, dump the rest of your PI into power, in my case, I went with a race engine block, followed by sport valves. If you've done everything correctly, you should be at 799 PI, which should be more than enough to get whatever shitty ricer rims or body kit you want on your car, but if you're happy with how cute your Mazda looks, then get a sports flywheel. Now that your PI is at 800, as usual, go check if you can still get a drive line. Luckily, we can. 
Now that you finally earned enough money to ditch that job as a hairdresser, it's time to further deepen your life plans, and by that I mean tune the car, of course. For gearing, adjust your final drive towards acceleration until your top speed is 160 miles per hour, or 260 kilometers per hour. This might seem a bit low, but trust me, it provides you the best mix of both acceleration and top speed, and turns this car into a circuit monster. For alignment, keep the stock camber values, and add 0.12 out at the front, and 0.12 in at the back. From there, go to brakes, and adjust your braking force pressure to 90%, so your brakes don't lock up, and that's it. If you feel like all of that was too complicated, you can just download the tune from my Forza storefront. My game attack is Flamethrower XXX. Now that you're ready to surprise everyone, by overtaking them in what is essentially a cute looking shit box, go get some podium finishes. And remember, that contrary to popular belief, if you're actually looking for a nice, cheap rear wheel drive daily car to buy, Miata isn't always the answer, as there's a lot of other nice cars you can get. It's just a very strong contender. Goodbye and thank you for watching.